Welcome back YouTube. It has been eight months since we installed the Express Water Reverse Osmosis System and I wanted to give you an update on how its performance has gone as well as give a filter change. So if you're interested, stick around. Alright, well first things first, I know what you guys all want to know is how has the system held up over time. We did a total dissolved solids test at the beginning uh, or rather at the end of the last video when we installed it and I think we got somewhere in the 20s I'll have to clip in exactly what we got right here new system we are at 21 so let's go ahead and take some water out of the faucet that's provided with the kit and take our total dissolved solids meter right here and see what we get now we'll mix that around in there and then we'll go ahead and hit the hold button and 25 is what we're getting can you guys see that probably not 25 so 25 if we look at the back of this meter is still in the very low range for reverse osmosis system so still very good after eight months i figure while we're at it we'll go ahead and change the sediment filter on the uh, going into the house this was installed in my house when i bought it and uh, this does not come with the express water system there is a sediment filter that's part of those three filters but this is an addition to it that i already had and i just buy these little one micron uh like paper filters basically off of amazon they're pretty cheap but i haven't changed this since we did the express water system install either so we might as well change this uh while we're at it and i just got all wet I was relieving the pressure here. I've already turned off the water. There's a valve right here below here. So now we should be able to unscrew this thing. There we go. And partly I just wanted to show you guys how dirty my water really is. A lot of rust in it. Kind of give you an idea of what this thing has been filtering out the last eight months. So the second obvious question is, has there been any leaks? Has anything failed? And the answer is no, there's been no leaks. Nothing's failed, it's worked flawlessly. And even if there had been leaks, I really like the option where they give you this little valve down here. I guess it's not an option, it's included in I think every kit that they offer. It's this little valve, it has a little cartridge in here. When this gets wet, it expands and flips this up and cuts the system off. It also is useful, obviously, when we're about to change the filters. We can just cut off this filter or the system right there and we can replace the filters. I think the only thing that I was surprised about, and I don't know why I was surprised about it, is this UV canister right here gets fairly hot. Not super, super hot, but it does get hot, which makes sense. There's a bright bulb in there killing all the bacteria. And then if it does go out, there's a red fault light on the ballast back there where you can see the green light on right now. Now, I haven't had any failures on it, but I can see that the fault light is there. So, you know, every once in a while you check that and see if it's failed. Now, full transparency, guys, Express Water did provide this set of replacement filters to me for free. I reached out to them, which I usually do with companies of products that I like and I do reviews on. And I asked them if they would like to do some kind of sponsorship. That's how this channel works. That's how we keep things going. So. They did provide these filters free of charge to me, but that doesn't change the fact of the performance of their system, as you can see with the TDS meter and the fact that I haven't had any leaks and the system has performed flawlessly. That being said, the original kit I paid full price for, I bought it on Amazon, but do yourself a favor if you're gonna buy the kit and grab it off their website, I'll leave the link down below. Now on to the filter replacement. The manual says every six months you're to replace these bottom three filters, which is the activated charcoal black ACB, the granulated activated carbon GAC, and this is a sediment filter over here. Now, when I put this system together, I made it so that I could kind of pull everything out. I left enough line to do that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna kind of pull everything out. I think that'll make it a lot easier to uh, change these filters. But before we do that, we're going ahead and empty the system. And so I'll flip up our little safety valve right there. And then I'll open up the top thing here and we'll start draining the water out of it. On a side note, you could just flip this little valve up here instead of draining the whole system. That's basically where you're getting a lot of your pressure, at least once uh, your bottom valve right here is turned off. Uh, but I think you have to run some water through the new filters anyways, so you might as well just drain the whole system. All right, I think we're ready, we're drained. We can go ahead and get this reservoir tank out. This is a little tight in my install, but not too tight. 
And I left enough rope on this to just pull completely out, which is great. And then the way I did this is this thing hooks on, this whole, this whole assembly hooks on and should be able to pull on out. So let's see if we can do that. Now it's still technically full of water, or at least you know most of it is. That's as far as I can remove it unless I unplug the UV, uh, which we could do, but I don't think we have to do, to be honest with you. We won't be changing the RO filter today because that's at every year. I'm close at eight months, but I think I'll just give it till the end of the year, which would be August. So coming up here, not too far away. Uh, and then I'll do the reverse osmosis system. If you're interested in another video on that, leave a comment below, let me know. Um, and the pack filter, I think is every year too. That's the post activated carbon filter. It's supposed to make everything taste all dandy. So really it's just these bottom filters right now. Let me get a towel cause there's water in them. We're gonna make a mess and I don't want the wife yelling at me. All right, I'm back with the post activated wife appeasement cloths. They are set in place. So now it's just a matter of unscrewing these and one by one and then making sure uh, that we don't get water everywhere. We'll start with uh, the furthest away, which is the sediment filter. Very similar to what I used before, or sorry, what I was using outside. The express water kit comes with these little wrenches. These things are a lifesaver. I would say use them if you can. So they just, they actually don't go on. There we go. Lefty, lefty loosey, righty tighty, right guys? This is product too. You would think I would know that. All right, so here we come. We're gonna get some water here. And can we lift it? There we go. And let me drain this out. I'll give you guys a shot of what it looks like. It looks very similar to the one that we just pulled from outside. So again, this, this one catches a lot of that, that rust and stuff like that. Um, yeah, pretty good. Eight months worth of rust right there. So I'm gonna throw that in the sink. We'll rinse this out so there's no more rust in it. It's all nice and clean, at least mostly. And then we'll take our first filter, which is like the, pretty much the same thing that we just put in outside, except this is a five micron. The one I put outside was a one micron. And we'll stick this in here, make sure it's seated at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and tilt this thing up. It's heavy with all this water in it. There we go. There we go. Now I had a leak on this one when I first installed it, so just make sure you get them nice and tight. You got your little handy dandy wrench. So there's really, you know, kind of no excuse not to get them tight. That's good, not too tight. So there's the sediment filter. Next we'll move on to our GAC granulated carbon nonsense filter. There we go. I had a lot of comments on the last video of people not having having issues. And keep in mind that you know you have to have at least 40 psi on your water system here for it to get through the RO system. So if you do not have 40 psi for whatever reason, that is probably why you are not getting any water through your system. The reservoir tank does not provide that pressure necessarily. So um, that's really just a reservoir. It, it does provide some pressure, but it's not like how you might think. So we'll give you a little shot of this filter. You can see there's some rust inside there. This is kind of slimy up here. I don't know why it's slimy. Maybe it's just slick. I'm getting water everywhere. Uh, so anyways, that one's that. We can get our new one out of here in the plastic. GAC, 100% coconut shell carbon. Basically the way carbon works, guys, is there's a lot of little crevices in it. 
specially activated carbon, which a lot of times will go through an acid treatment to break up and add more little crevices to it, and stuff just gets stuck in it. And that's how it filters stuff. The way this one works is this little seal is on the top. So we go ahead and stick it in there like that. And we'll screw it back on. There we go. And then last is our activated carbon block. This one's serious. It's ACB, activated carbon block. It was. This one obviously is not as bad as the other ones, but it does have some rust on here, some some uh, nastiness. So definitely time to change. Again, I'll rinse out the cup, grab our can't keep track of all these abbreviations. ACB filter. Right. Yep, ACB filter. This one it removes chlorine, insecticides, benzene, taste, odors, and other organic chemicals. In case you wanted to know. And then again, this one, well, it's the same on both sides. So, but you can see there's kind of some debris here, some black stuff. That's partly why you run it for a little while after you install it to make sure you kind of flush out any stuff that was in there from the manufacturing plant. And that's done. Again, uh, we're not gonna change the uh, reverse osmosis filter this time. This is at one year. Uh, if you wanna see that video, let me know. I can do it. Uh, this one's probably gonna be a little more difficult. You gotta kinda of pop all these other things out open and then they give you another wrench, this guy right here for the end of this. I also had a leak here when I first started and just tightening this up, uh, fix that. So now that we're done, oh, the other tip that I should have given you that I didn't is take out your little um, tablet right here because if any of that water had gotten on this thing, it would have expanded and we would have had to put another one in, which I do have an extra, but no reason to just waste them. So tip number 100 there. Let's go ahead and lift this thing back into place. We'll kick on the water with this valve. We'll see if it's leaking. And if it's not, we might be just done. There we go. There we go. There you go. I measured it fine. It was fine. <laughs> All right, we'll flip our thing right here. We can see our stuff filling up here. All these canisters start filling up as the water moves forward. Our reservoir is going to start filling up. I'm going to lay this towel down just in case it does start leaking. It won't get to our little tablet because I didn't take it out because I'm I live dangerously like that. And then you guys can't see this probably, but you can see this is kind of dark and black. Again, that's the charcoal. It needs to be flushed. So we're starting to get a little bit of water. <laughs> coming out of our faucet up there. I have the instructions and there's a section right here restarting the system. We've basically done everything. It says let the system refill with water. This takes two to three hours. You can open the RO faucet briefly to release any air trapped inside the system while it's filling. Be sure to check for leaks. After the water state storage tank has filled, drain the entire system by opening the RO faucet until the water flow is reduced to a slow trick trickle. Repeat steps three through four three times. So we want it to fill and then drain it three times in a row and then it is drinkable. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty simple. It's filling up now, I can hear it. Uh, again, here's the RO about once a year and the post out activated once a year. So these are the two that we didn't uh, change this time, but will change in August. And yeah, and then these are the ones we changed today, which says about every six months. Well, there you have it guys, express water, reverse osmosis, filter change. And some of you might be asking, well, aren't you gonna test the water again? Likely it's not gonna change almost anything at all. The reverse osmosis filter is the one that does all the heavy lifting. That's what really takes all the particles out. So this, 
the th three filters we just replaced really just keep that reverse osmosis from getting all clogged up with uh, you know larger debris so uh, not really any reason that again to test the water it's going to probably come out around 25 again as well uh, and i'll keep you guys updated in the comments if there's any change in that uh, but if you have any questions leave a comment below really great product really happy with them it's not just because they gave me free filters although thank you express water for helping out my channel and sponsoring this with some free filters i really appreciate it uh, if you guys want a system head over to the express water system website the link will be in the description maybe with a discount code we'll see and uh thanks for watching guys see ya next time mm -hmm.